Happy Friday, Baylor College of Medicine, and Happy New Year, by the way. Hope everybody had a great New Year's and Christmas. Uh, I certainly did. I took a couple of weeks and went to Brazil, and I came back with most of my body parts, except for those that are being held for ransom. Uh, so anyway, lots, is, lots has been going on, and I had a lot of great questions over the holidays, so thank you for that. Uh, I got to see my sister. <laughs> I survived. <laughs> that was much tougher than a trip to Brazil. Uh, anyway, uh, there's a lot going on, and I was going to do a Q&A for today, but I think instead I'll catch up on what's, going, uh, what's currently taking place because everybody I know is sick. So when I travel, I don't know, if many of you probably traveled all the ho over the holidays, and everybody was coughing, everybody was sneezing, a small number of people wearing masks, but virtually nobody. And uh, when I got back, most of my family was sick with an upper respiratory infection. Uh, they just were, you know, throwing it off like it's a cold. So I started asking, well, why don't you go to COVID test? So a lot of them came back positive. Uh, luckily, most of the symptoms these days are just like an up a significant cold, but a lot of COVID is around. So I thought I'd start off by just sort of giving you an update. First of all, the, the numbers are all up. Uh, test positivity is up, emergency department visits, some of the severity indicators and also deaths are up. And this is... It's not the worst uh, year, but if you look at last season, we had this huge peak in January. We're, we're heading up, but you can see this is hospitalizations and test positivity. And test positivity is up quite a bit as, as, as are hospitalizations. <laughs> this is the, the thing I don't get, most of all. If you look at the cumulative percentage of adults who've gotten the updated vaccine, booming, it's up to 20%. I mean, that's pretty pathetic. I, I, I just don't get it. It, it. It definitely reduces severity and your risk, but I don't know. And of course, it's not the same everywhere. We probably have parts of the country that are leading in failure to get uh, vaccinated. Of course, uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, and our friends in Florida are leading the way. Texas isn't doing much better, 13%. But Louisiana, 10%. Mississippi, 7%. Florida, 10%. Versus... Uh, other parts of the country, the Northeast, Midwest, that are much higher, almost you know, 40, 50 percent of the population vaccinated. So, what does that what does that mean? You know, is it worse or not if, if there are parts of the country not vaccinated? Well, it's interesting. If you look at uh, studies that look at zero positivity for those who are infected, so you can take blood out of a, of a person and tell whether or not they were infected because the vaccine only is to the spike protein, but you have antibodies to other parts of the virus, which you can detect on a test, and that can tell the person who's studying uh, that you've been actually infected, not just vaccinated. So the seroprevalence is actually really high in the, in the South where the vaccinations are low. In other words, the people who have not been vaccinated are really are getting infected. The lowest are in the Northeast, where the vaccinations are highest. So in those cases, uh, the, most of the patients have been, or most of the population has been vaccinated, and they're not, they're not getting infected as much. Now, if you look at another way of just saying, you know, if, you're, if you have antibodies based on being vaccinated or infected, the vast majority of the country is at a point where it's like, like 95% of people in the United States are having antibodies, either because they were va vaccinated or infected. So I think that accounts for why we're seeing more of a seasonal distribution, because the entire country has got an antibody based on either being infected or vaccinated, and that, so there's no particular advantage through the vaccination process because every, everybody else has been infected. So we're seeing more seasonal distribution, in other words, people in the north are getting more uh, infected again because the, vac the, the virus has actually changed. So there's a, lot of vir there's a lot of virus around. This is wastewater samples are 100% or 200% increase. 55% of the sites now report 100 to 200% increases. And it's really fascinating to look at where those are. So this is what I said. It's more of a seasonal distribution, much more in the northeast and midwest where it's cold, up in Colorado also in Utah. In Houston, not so, not so bad. We have an increase, but it's only 163% of what it was in, Janu in uh, July of 2020. So it's, it's high, but it's not as high as it could be. And it's gotten, in, in the past, it's been much higher than that. What's driving all of this? Well, we've talked about this before the holidays. 
JN1 is really the dominant species now. It's 44% with HV1 being about 22%. And you can see the rise, that's the purple, this tremendous increase uh, of JN1. Why JN1? Well, if you'll recall, before the holidays, we talked about this concern about BA 2.86. This was the one that was discovered in Denmark and Europe, and then all of a sudden in eight or nine different countries. And their concern was it would be like Omicron because it had so many mutations, 30 to 40 mutations. Uh, and, and so the concern was it would spread just as fast as Omicron did, and it didn't. Uh, it didn't at all until it acquired one single mutation, additional mutation, and became JN.1 from 286. At that point, it developed much more infectivity uh, and maybe it was different enough that we couldn't, uh, that our antibodies didn't detect as much, and so it became the dominant species. Now, I remind you, the vaccine was XBB 1.5, and it looks in this diagram like they're close, but actually the way these tree diagrams work is that it goes back to the origin. It's very different. So if you look at JN1, it's actually quite different from XBB 1.5. Now, there's plenty of data in vitro, in, in other words, in studies in, in laboratories that the XBB 1.5 vaccine has effectiveness against, against the JN.1. It's not a perfect match, but those people, I mean, this is one of the reasons I encourage everyone, get a vaccine, the updated vaccine, because it does, it is effective against JN1. Not, it's not a perfect match, but it doesn't have to be perfect to be effective, just to, good enough to help your body uh, deal with it. Well, what about the flu? We're in the absolute in the middle of the flu season. It looks a lot like this flu season is going to be sort of like it was pre-pandemic, but not quite as bad. So just to show you, these are hospitalizations due to flu. We're, you know, we're definitely peaking as we always do in December and January. If you look at pneumonia influ and influenza mortality, you can see last year we peaked in January. This is not as bad, but we're still on the way up. And a little bit later, this was December, January, we're now in January. I expect uh, that we will have a peak that's not quite as bad as it was last year. And this is really interesting. You look at cumulative rates of laboratory confirmed influenza hospitalizations. This was during the pandemic, there was virtually none. Way pre-pandemic, it was pretty high here in, in 2017. And the last year, it was somewhere intermediate. It looks like this year, we're gonna be sort of like last year. That's what I anticipate will be sort of like last year. And the good news is so far, it remains mainly influenza A of the H1N1 and H3N2, H1N1 being the dominant uh, variant, with the Yamagata lineage not being present, but the Victoria lineage being around. So you can see we might be peaking about now. It looks like the number of test positivity has plateaued and maybe it's coming down. A little too early to tell, but we are in the midst of the flu season. And we're also in the midst of the RSV season. So if you look at RSV last year, respiratory syncytial virus last year peaked in January, we are peaking again. And these two, the two risk groups are zero to four and over the age of 65. So the reason the vaccine for RSV is so important in, in mothers, that zero to six month protection, and then in kids up, up to the age of four, those are the real peak problems, and then over the age of 65. So those are the recommendations also by the CDC. So one last thing that came out, of course, got a lot of shout outs for, for, uh, for Lily. A lot of people wrote in and they were concerned about this new dog pneumonia that's been reported. Uh, it's actually been reported to the CDC now that there's an atypical canine infectious disease complex that has been mostly, in, it was first reported in Colorado, but also in a number of different states. And it causes fever, cough, lethargy. It actually acts like kennel cough. And the concern was, is it, a, you know, is it some sort of COVID variant? We really don't know at this point. There's, they're studying it. I'll let you know as soon as I know. Lily is all over me. I mean, geez, what about these, this dog virus? I don't know, we already reviewed the cat virus that was on the island of Crete. Nobody cares about them, but this we actually care about. So CDC's got to get on top of this. Anyway, I want to end it today with a, a couple of shout outs. First, uh, this week starts the first classes for incoming doctors uh, of nurse practice program. Uh, we're very excited about the 25 students who began training, 23 are Texans. This includes 18 women, seven men. 
Uh, they, you know, it's a really good program. They usually come in as RNs with at least four to five years of experience and get their PhD in uh, doctor of nursing practice. And of course, the most important shout out is my Michigan Wolverines. Uh, they finally won, although they tried to give the game away to Alabama. I think they just want to spot them seven or ten points just to show they were a better team. Anyway, congratulations. My Wolverines can't wait to see them in the championship game coming up on Monday. So have a great weekend, uh, and uh, I hope to see you next week. And remember, go blue.